What is up, everyone? Welcome to the Thursday slash Friday Midnight Happy Hour starring your boy, Monk, and my intrepid co-host, Lou Bay. I always forget what you uh, what you say on the prop show, and I always mean to introduce you. What, what is the thing that you say? The Paragon of Virtue. Thank you. Thank you. I can never that's, remember that's, it. That's a different show on this show. I'm a yeah, but it's, it's, it's so good. Lou, know, how's it going, man? I'm such a scumbag on this show. I don't want to be... <laughs> I'm looking forward to this one. We got 14 fights to get into. How are you feeling? You looking forward to Atlantic City? I know you uh, are going to the card. I mean, I'm looking forward to it in terms of like there are fights that happen where ball shots can be had. Betting wise, I think this is a kind of a tricky card. Like even on the prop show, man, I have three. I had three props I really liked. I had a main event prop I liked. I had a yam bag prop I liked because it involved the pleasure man. <laughs> Not super tactical, but uh, I enjoy, I like this card. Like it's another one. Like I like the card. I don't like betting it. Right. But uh, well, you will yeah, be entertained. And I'm, gonna, and, and I'm gonna like you know I'm gonna fuck with some people down in AC, man. There you go. Mushroom and I to drink more beers and. Everybody else combined is is currently minus one fifteen, <laughs> and I think it's I think it's like a five unit bet. I like it. Yeah, I was gonna. I say don't need much. Stuff. I like I can cover that lumber on my own. <laughs> this is a max level. Speaking of mushroom, let's shout out the chat. Mushroom here. We got Prince of Mischief. We've got Prince of Mischief. The warden let you free. Doing a lot of yard work. Yeah, yeah. Lou, you have uh, you know, the rec time. I think he's got a conjugal going on. Actually, the. Made buddies with the warden. I think something about tarring a roof or something like that. I don't know. Shared a bunch of beers with his friends. Maybe I just dreamt that up. But without further ado, let's get into this card right here. First fight of the night. Calvin Lochran taking on Angel Pacheco. Minus 180 doesn't go. Plus 150 goes all three. Minus 360 for the most uh, second most expensive DraftKings fighter on the card uh, in Calvin Lochran. Plus two ninety five for Pacheco Lou. Why don't you get us started with this opening? Uh, opening card uh, could be a banger here. I mean, Pacheco's <laughs> moving down in weight, which is weird. That's true. And Lockeran is like, I mean, is he like really good? Is he minus three sixty good <laughs> against like, Pacheco? Maybe. I mean, this is a dude who like. When I like looked at his shit, I'm like, oh, cool. His first two opponents were combined 0 and 70. <laughs> it's like insane, dude. Like, how do you beat a dude who's 0 and 31? They're like, all right, like, nice win, dude. We're gonna give you a we're gonna give you a better, we're gonna give you you just beat an 0 and 31 guy. Your next opponent's gonna be worse. <laughs> what the fuck? How is that possible, dude? They're just I mean, building them up, man. They're just building them up. Like Lochran's like every Irish cage warriors dude ever. Like, like looks like he has power. Looks like he has grappling. Doing it against nobody. <laughs> so like, and I parlayed him with Algio because I don't like Pacheco moving down. I think I don't think Pacheco is good at all. I, and I almost think like. This line's close as it is because he he lost a fight that was like crazy and people are like oh man he's so exciting but like he's pretty shitty like he has no defense so I think Lockran like has takedown upside can probably get a finish on the feet like he hits pretty hard at one thirty five so but, yeah the, the pick is Lockran <laughs> and by yeah, the way by the way Lou Lou has commanded me to tell you. He is no fan of the Irish. <laughs> Speaking of, uh, everyone knows Lou, uh, not technically back on Twitter, but he has uh, a proxy that he speaks to. I'm through. not back. No, right. Lou's not back. But his assistant has a uh, a Twitter now, Louise, right? I believe her, her name, Miss Louise. She's Very nice a woman. She also did all the Photoshop. <laughs> she also did all the Photoshop tonight. So let's uh, let's cross our fingers. Uh you know that that she did a good job. I was I'm busy this week. I got family in town. My stationary. Yeah, yeah. I I I had to uh, utilize the. Uh, you know, I just took the assistant too. You know, I mean, I figure it's for both of us. You know, uh, I'll keep this quick. I like Helen Lockren, especially for cash. I think he 
uh, you know, should be all right against Pacheco here. Hopefully you get some of that grappling going that Lou did mention. Um, did land, uh, I mean, he got hit with five point strikes a minute against Taylor Lapulus. Not great, but ended up scoring 45 points in that. Say, say it again. Not Lapulus. How'd you say it? Lapulus. 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 Uh, scored 45. Not bad. And uh, yeah, you nailed it with Pacheco. Uh, he got hit. You thought 5.6 strikes a minute was a lot. Pacheco got hit with 13. 0.6 strikes a minute against uh against silva also landed 13 but still no defense uh i'm thinking lochran looks pretty decent here 9400 probably not such a bad salary angel got extreme heart that is true he did he did uh 33 takedown defense so he did allow two takedowns but got up only five percent control time over 15 minutes that was a no defense striking fight so yeah the guy definitely uh Definitely, I would say has heart. Oi, DFS or Brady in the house. What is cracking? Hey, Monk. What's hey, up? Monk. It's the first fight of the night, too. Like, this is the John Kelly principle. That's true. You got to play the first fight of the night. I do really like Locker this this week, though, even at the expensive salary. We'll see if it uh we'll see if it Italian, pays off. Awesome. What's that? If he was Italian, he would be awesome. <laughs> I don't know, man. Italian's not looking great in the UFC in in recent uh recent memory. In general. We've got and I hey, I'm backing them. You, you best believe. Uh Jacob Malcoon, the battle of the beards taking on Andre Petrosky. Plus 120 doesn't go, minus 150 goes all three, minus 230. A dentist's favorite odds uh for Jacob Malcoon, plus 195 for Andre Petrosky, 9k 7200 here. I'll start this one off. Usually, if I see Jacob Malkoon's name, I am going to, yeah, exactly, Bill. I am going to play uh, Jacob Malkoon. He does fantastically. Um, of course, my spreadsheet is just frozen, so never mind that. I don't need it. Uh, Malkoon's scoring like 130 points in two of his fights. Uh, you know, he's averaging well over 110 probably at this point. Um, and you could argue that he won all five of his last five fights. Uh, I don't have the names, of course, in front of me. Um, but the Brundage fight, I mean, he was killing Brundage until he was, Fuck you know, you. decided to be Fuck a, you, he was. Decided to be a dirty little cheater and uh throw 55 forearm shivers to the back of Brundage's head. And he was also looking good against Brendan Allen. That's the other one. Brendan Allen, um, on paper, man, he looked the, the stats are there for Jacob Malkoon. And there we go with my sheet. Ran uh 15 minutes with Maximov, beat Al Hassan and Dobson. So he's looking good. Great, great, great DraftKings play. But man, is he gonna be able to do that against Andre Petrosky? I don't know. And for that reason, at 7,200, I think this line is way too wide. I love this fight for GPPs, but I am going to favor Andre Petrosky here. Uh, yeah, he got pieced up by Pajeta in one minute, but he's looked decent outside of that. Everybody talks about he's a gas bag, but man, a, th a third round submission. Uh, you know, you don't have to have all your energy for a submission, but you certainly can't pull it off if you're completely, completely gassed. Ran through Maximov. I just think there's big upside for both guys, and I especially think that for Petrosky. So I'll have a bunch of him in this week's lineups. Lou, how do you like this one? Whose beard is better, first of all? I, I don't like this comment. <laughs> yeah, get him out. Get him out of here. Is that what they say? If, yeah, I, was the kind, if I was the kind of guy that would get violent with a tire iron, I'm just I'm just saying. <laughs> kind of like, um, yeah. So I mean, you already know how I feel. We did the show last night with DFS. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm I'm being biased. I'm just gonna play Philly. I'm on the Petrovsky side here. I just I I feel like this line is completely predicated not on skill set. It's predicated on Petrovsky not having great cardio. Mm -hmm. but like on the feet this is so night and day this Petrovsky's like so much better and like look at the guys that Malkoon's fought in the UFC other than Allen who like Allen just wanted to fight like a really weird fight and not strike at all Allen seems like he's like now turning the corner like the Allen of now would like fuck Malkoon up yeah like, yeah like, I agree I can't look back. Like I'm not trying to do MMA math. I'm really, I'm really not. But like Nick Maximoff had one leg one minute into that fight. Malcolm, he's like, "Hey, dude, we're gonna fight 15 minutes." Cool. Which was great for us DraftKings guys, but still. 
But you know it was better for drafting these guys? Petrosky tore the fuck through Nick Maximov. <laughs> they crushed him. And I feel like Petrosky can take Malkoon down. Brundage did it. Allen did it. I don't think his, ta- his takedown defense is listed as 0%. Yeah, three times he's been to all three times. Okay, I think Petrosky, if he gets on top, can win a round. Like, I really do. I don't think Malkoon's bottom game is good. And Petrosky actually throws punches. So exactly. I have I have a track bet on Petrosky plus three and a half minus one fifty five. I think he wins one or two at a pretty high clip. Three, you know, look, if you want to plan this narrative that like his cardio is not great, but he wins round threes against guy. Right. That's what I'm saying. So like I like him big here. I think this number is stupid. It's not based on skill set. It's based on Malcoon having good cardio and then doing nothing with it. Mm-hmm. And the last thing I'll add is if you love Malcoon, look what we're getting from judging lately. You yep. see dudes get takedowns, do no damage, and judges like don't give a fuck, dude. So like Petrosky's gonna have the optics for sure. So Petro nope. season. Malcoon was landing ground and bound, but too bad they were all illegal shots. I know uh, John no. Lee doesn't watch the show, but Petrosky's part of the John Lee parlay. There we go. I love it. I'm big. I want to be big on Petrosky this week for sure. Next fight, Melissa Gatto taking on Victoria Dudikova plus 150 does not go to decision. Minus 180 does. Minus 140 for Gatto plus 120 for Dudikova. 85, 7700 here for the two. What do you think of this women's flyweight fight? First of at least two, I believe, on this card. So last week I said, I don't know what it is, this Billy Q's a law line, but old gambler instinct is fucking with me. So I gave out Zalal without a breakdown, saying, like, I just know. This is another one, dude. I, I feel like due to COVID's the, the bet, I can't justify it with a breakdown. I don't get this number. She didn't look good against Jenny Frey. She's moving up. She had staff in her vagine. Or <laughs> That's it. right, dude. Like, there's a lot know. not to like on the Dudakova side. And here she is, only plus 120. Somebody knows shit that I don't. Like, Gatto should crush her. If you just, like, as I'm conceptualizing it, Gatto should kick her ass. Right. And yet, this line, dude, it's like somebody fucking... Knows. So so my breakdown is that somebody fucking knows something. This line should be wider, and it's not. And and I don't know why. So I'm picking due to COVID to win, and I hate it. I'm never betting it, but I think due to COVID is the side. Yeah, this one I don't really want much of, I don't think. Well, I don't, that's not true, actually. I'll probably be average on both sides. I'm going to go with Gatto just because for the reasons you said, it's I can just see it playing out in my head. She has dropped her last two, um, but against Tracy Cortez and Lipsky, who is, who's been looking better and better uh, with each fight, I believe. Um, I don't I don't think it's the end of the world there. Meanwhile, Dudikova, quick win against Nunez, who dislocated her elbow and then beat Jin Yu Frey, but only scored 77 points. So I don't know how excited I am about the scoring here. I mean, Gatto uh, broke Leonardo's arm uh, scored 116 in her debut, but then only 81 against Sarge with a KO in the third round. So I might just be around field weight here. I'm not too excited. I'm not exactly fading either side. Nobody's too big of a dog. The price on Dudakova is not great at 77. It's just kind of a kind of a blah fight for me. I'll pick Gatto though for uh for Brian's uh for Brian's picks. Next fight. See, I can beat I can if she wins now, I can beat you on that show. And exactly. Not- with a tire iron i have not been doing great the past couple not at all i don't is think it we're because, gonna... is it possibly because somebody got banned on twitter yeah you're in my head dude i'm like i don't want to like this threat's real i don't want to i don't want it to come to fruition i feel like christopher walken like oh look at that this is uh, this is the <laughs> oh is that from friday yeah boo this man is that, that Friday? That's fucking <laughs> sick. <laughs> Louise, you did a great job. First, one I shouldn't of the night. have said I shouldn't have said nothing because I don't think I, I feel like some of our chat would have seen it. Like I shouldn't have said nothing. <laughs> I think, she but I great. love your. I get your references. Like 
perfect so i'm like oh shit well it's it's here we have the pleasure man gross against the businessman are you here for business or pleasure Ebo aslan is here for both all right look at the suit he's like this dude's a joke minus 400 doesn't go all right so fantastic plus 300 goes all for, uh three uh minus 124 on Ebo aslan that's wild plus 104 for anton 8300 also wild and 79 i'll go ahead and start this one off lou uh as you know my hatred my pure uh unadulterated hatred of the pleasure man and his nickname prince get prince of mischief out of get him out of here mods who's louise get him out of here uh the I, I my hatred of the pleasure man knows no bounds and uh it's really permeated all of everybody i do a show with everybody that talks to me every i've been hit up so many times this week and once again we are gonna uh fade the pleasure man of course Ebo aslan his only loss i know is against the pleasure man gross but he has tremendous first round upside here. Tremendous first round upside at 8,300. You have to play this guy. And I have to talk about, since this is a DraftKings show and not just my favorite uh, my favorite fighter show, <laughs> um, if he doesn't land that round one KO, look, Turkali is going to be able to take him down and it's not going to look good for uh, the businessman, Ebo Aslan. So I am going to play a little bit of Anton Turkali in my GPP tournaments, but... Ebo Aslan is absolutely a pick. I'm going to have way more of him than Turkali. I mean, let's go like, let's twice as much, three times. I don't know. Aslan is going to put this guy down and out of the UFC. If he gets another fight, are we dealing with another Daniel Da Silva here? I mean, what is going on, man? Give me Ebo Aslan, first round KO. Boo this man, the pleasure man. Boo this man. <laughs> His hair is stupid. I'd rather stay bald, Prince of Mischief. So I was shocked that the DFS show with you last night and that fake American Gordo and that real fake American <laughs> Brady were both on Turkali. And then I do the show with Aaron and just my two cents. That, now, to just my two cents credit, he's flipped, he literally flipped the coin and it landed on Turkali. Aaron's <laughs> like, well, they fought before. I'm taking Turkali. Like, oh my so God. So all I want to say is that so my, my pick is Evo Aslan because Turkali stinks. He's awful. He, he rated, I believe he had the lowest score ever on your, your short lived nickname show. I think he got like a negative 10. <laughs> yeah. He was the only one with a negative score. Where, where zero is, I don't have a nickname and negative 10 was the pleasure <laughs> man. So I want to, I want to say a world where he wins and then he gets on the mic and he beats like Ichihara in terms of like he, he's like yeah that was wild and crazy yeah <laughs> like ah I hope all girls here are, are fingered and pleasured <laughs> like if if he has to oh. win I will I will settle for nothing less than ridiculousness on the mic like if he wins the decision like I, what are we doing here oh my god if he Cut wins him by anyways like, if he wins by like anal foreplay. Like, okay, that's right. At least that's like funny. And like it boils your blood. <laughs> Should we just can we can we give away like an Oslan Brendan Allen parlay right now for like the against the guys we despise? Yes, please. Okay. Aslan Allen. Aslan, as they're said, combined. <laughs> Bre Brenbo Brenbo Aslan. Aslan. Brenbo Aslan. I love it. Um, Charty McDennis. Yeah. I mean, just Sir Kali stinks on this level. Even if I take away the, the short notice fight against Almeida, which like I, I can, I'm fine with like removing that. He had a path against Pedro. That was don't walk with your hands down and get bonked immediately. <laughs> and he's like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to walk with my hands down and get bonked immediately. Yep. And I think we're realizing that a Petrino just doesn't have power. He he has like he looks like he has power, but like he doesn't. Yeah, I think weird. Aslan can like fuck this dude up. So I'm picking so. I'm picking Ebo Aslan to make sure I don't lose the show. Redemption. So yeah, exactly. Thank you. Redemption song for yeah. If you picked her Kali, this shit is over now. I don't want to like I don't want to like not do this show anymore. Yeah, Sorry. this this would be the line. You you would cross line. I also, also, I need to remind everyone that if you do indeed like the Pleasure Man's nickname and think it's fun and funny and awesome, his father, 
gave him that nickname. Let's just. Oh, by let the me, way, let me throw a damper on your on that. While we're talking about nonsense, can I just announce that like through a hilarious misunderstanding from this dummy, uh, for UFC 300, Luke will be a guest on this show, not yes. the prop show. <laughs> so have like sparring with reality, Luke, our boy, Luke Lance, yes. will be. I'm like, okay, he. If he's too dumb to understand that I meant the prop show, like great. <laughs> yeah, it works in my benefit. I like, love, no I love making content with Luke. So, so Luke will be on the show for UFC 300 as I like bask in Cody goodness. <laughs> yes, that's going to be a good one. All right. I mean, Prince of Mischief, are you going for if you're I, I made a joke about banning you. If you're going for Dirk Holly, you're fucking banned, bro. You're fucking banned. <laughs> Yeah, Monk's not <laughs> fucking around. I'm not playing like, around, goddamn. Like, I won't ban people for taking Chris Curtis next week because it's like a man event. <laughs> I get it. I but but also, I mean, Monk's equal say here, dude. Saw That's blonde right. dog. That dog. The big bad dog. Oh my goodness. I'm just gonna not look at the chat for 10 minutes. Dennis <laughs> Bazookia no, taking it, on. It, it's grown it, too it's much. Look, man. It, it's grown too much. I, I have to just I have to just go with it now. It's become all all that I am. Dennis Bazookia, but we're gonna call him Bazooka because it's fun. Taking on Connor with two ends, Matthews plus one oh five doesn't go minus one thirty-five goes all three, minus one sixteen, minus one oh four for Matthews. Very close, uh close battle here, eighty four, seventy eight hundred. Um, I uh did you did I start the last one? I think I did. I don't know what to do here um 80 start. yeah you start why don't you start i'm leaning toward a bazooka bat as this week goes on and and i'm gonna break this down technically okay connor matthews has a breathing coach mm. this bum this bum has a breathing coach he has a coach that that's like hey man breathe and he's like oh, okay <laughs> He, pay, he pays a human being to remind him to breathe. It's like, do I need a pizza coach? Hey, it's been three days, Lou. <laughs> Slice. We need yes, some of them peps. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, it's ridiculous. So I, I almost feel like that's the, like, how do I not bet against the guy? Like Aaron Rodgers doesn't have a breathing coach and Aaron Rodgers is like the worst. <laughs> all right so like from an actual standpoint bazooka's like fought better guys did a better camp like matthews has some grappling upside i guess who is who does he train with he trains with fucking rob font and calvin cater so it's, it's not like he's not improving his grappling yeah i mean i like i take steroids just for the small penis <laughs> widely, it's widely known it's a widely known fact i think bazooka like i don't think he's like dude i mean this is a terrible fight but like it's probably going to be on the feet 15 minutes like matthew striking is like loosely called martial arts mixed martial arts this is true bazooka probably wins like just a horrendous decision here and like i don't want to say like He's plus 300 on his next fight. But, like, if he didn't get, like, crushed by Emmers. Yeah. Then, like, what's this line? I, he's he's better, I guess. Like, I actually, like, want to bet him. I saw the breathing coach, and I'm like, <laughs> just caught him. Just caught him from the UFC. Like, this is terrible. <laughs> like, even even your boy, Turkali, doesn't have a breathing. Well, he might. He might. We don't know. Yeah. A breathing coach. Hey. <laughs> You've been fighting hard today. Breathe. <laughs> oh, like, yeah. Have you like who the fuck even thinks? Hey, you know what's missing from my camp? I suck, and I barely, and I'm one on one in the contender series. You know what helped me? A fucking breathing coach. <laughs> That's where you should start. Dude, like, That's where you should start. You know what yeah. he looks like? A guy that that like he looks like a guy that charges people to be like, hey, man. I'm gonna learn how to breathe. <laughs> Let step two. You can breathe out of more than your mouth. Two steps you down from like spiritual advisor. You, you know can breathe I mean? through your nose. Oh fuck. Yeah. 
<laughs> oh my god no. life is so different <laughs> that's that's the method that uh Drickus went through and now he's champ somebody told him he could breathe through his nose does connor matthews even have a nickname or uh, the controller even i mean right i mean what that's is that not, it's not a comp troller i was gonna say if it was the comp troller then i'm i'm in but right. i'm not the but i'm not controller the controller what are we doing you know the controller sounds like not a very good boyfriend yeah not at all Sounds like a very bad boyfriend <laughs> meanwhile bazooka's nickname is like happy to dennis happy to be here bazooka actually it's the great which is also terrible it's ha his nickname is now happy to be here happy to be here dennis shoot the bazooka i'll take yeah. happy to be here over not good enough to be the comptroller <laughs> Yeah, I mean this guy. He he. Not only is he not good enough to to be the comptroller, he lost to the fire marshal of the town. He lost to Francis Marshall. Got taken down six times, bro. Six times. Uh, controlled for over a whole round. Beat somebody named uh, Yair Fadias. Took him down seven times. I don't, I'm on the bazooka side. I'm not thinking this is a huge fight for DraftKings. Although it could be a little sneaky uh, if we do see a finish. You th what what do you think? Can Bazooka f uh, finish this guy? early get a lot of points i i can finish three beers before this fight ends <laughs> no, so no no i don't no, i don't like that. it i don't like it for that one i, I would i would i would have zero percent ownership in DraftKings. like there if you're go. running 150 lineups i guess you have one. Oh my god oh she did all right here this is okay it's just blaze if, if you, if just you have blaze? Lineups, I, guess you, I guess you have to have each in like one lineup there you go Julio Arce, I guess she couldn't figure out anything to do with him. Herbert the Blaze Burns. That is such a cringe nickname. So I think that's why Just Blaze is in there. He kind of balances out the cringe because Just Blaze. Blaze is awesome. Just Blaze, plus it's fun to say. Minus 325 doesn't go, plus 250 does go. She also didn't center this fucking number. Oh, my God. Minus 400 for Julio Arce, plus 300 for Burns. Most expensive fighter cheapest fighter on the card look i'm not excited for uh julio arce here most expensive fighter this dude's averaging like 80 some points a fight just not that great only beaten daniel santos and andre ul in his last five uh herbert burns i mean say what you want about him about him getting carried out of the ring of the octagon by his younger brother but he lost to bill algio good loss and daniel Pine uh, daniel pineda decent loss as well not the worst uh, guy ever in Pineda. And Bill Algio, I really like Bill Algio. Not as much as Lou does, but uh, I really do like him. Um, I just don't know, man. I don't I don't see Herbert Burns winning this fight. Oh, my God. Uh, but Julio Arce. Julio Arce, I, I, I just don't know. History. What's that? I hope this isn't a dating history. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know what to do with that um yeah i'll be fading this one a little bit i'm picking arce do you think he can get a uh a, a, a high scoring finish win here against burns well if you guys listen to the df the DraftKings show on pub sports last night which i was a guest panelist and i will be again yes because wheezy is because wheezy is too good for all of you gallivanting around europe i listed arce as my fade of the week because i just think at this number he, uh, what does he need to justify? He needs a round one Dude, KO. And he, exactly. like you need you need domination, like round one, or you need huge grappling upside, and he doesn't have either. And I pointed out last night, Arce's last round one finish was 10 years ago. That's right. And it was a sub. His last round one KO was his pro debut, or KO was his pro debut. Like, he's not getting a submission round one here. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go on record. He's probably not getting a round one submission. So he's round two or round three, and it's like, what does he even like, do with that? Again, this is a line predicated on Burns having a gas issue. It's not skill set. Now his gas tank stinks. Yeah. So I'm picking Arce, but like, even his in the distance props are like shit. I think you're better off just betting like fight starts round two than than Ar. I think I said this last. I think it was on Aaron show. I think fight starts round two is minus one forty. And arson the distance was like minus 165. I'd way rather play fight starts round two as a bet. Yeah. So, I mean, even, well, it can't be worse. That's like, true. It, 
Is it he's doing the channel with Clint now, which has the worst name I've ever heard, Home of Fight. Like it's terrible. It's a terrible fucking name. Altitude, <laughs> New Jersey. <laughs> what are we on? Like the fucking isn't it on the, the isn't mountain? The, like what are we fucking doing here? Isn't the arena on top of a freaking landfill or some shit? I mean, Mushroom's going to be there. He negates any altitude. <laughs> He's going to stand on, like, the fucking mountain. Right. Like, I mean, Arthur is the pick. I think he, like, fucking wins. Ah, uh -huh. Dude, I saw this last night on Aaron. He's like, look at this here. Like, I, I love the CM Punk fucking. <laughs> I love it, dude. It's pretty funny. Right. <laughs> so I'm, I'm picking Arce. I'm going to reach here. And yeah, he's round yeah. two or round three, but like I'd much rather bet fight starts round two. Right. I don't think Burns can get him down. And I don't think Arce's put him away in round one. Minus 140, I think, is excellent odds for that. There we go. Let's five go. minute bet. Five minute bet for like Arce not to die in round one. Yeah. I think that's good. I think it is. Here we go. Lupita good Louise. What tell me tell me you saw the Dylan Dennis thing with this. Yeah, I did. What is All Louise right. doing here? She did give me this option, I guess, but what is she doing here? Lupita Godinez. This is disrespectful, Louise. Verna Janji Roba put some goddamn respect on her name. Plus 210 taken on uh Godinez. Minus 270 goes all three. Minus 212 outrageous for a straw weight fight for Godinez here. Plus 182 for Jandy Roba. 8,700, 7,500 for Verna. Um, what do you got here? Because honestly, not looking forward to this one for DraftKings. And I'm really hoping that Verna wins. I mean, I know it should happen. Loopy should win like a pretty clean decision because I don't think Verna wins on the feet. I don't think Verna gets takedowns, but if you go through, I'm pulling this up right now. If you go through Loopy's fucking shit and you get through her history, do you know who shouldn't have given her close fights? Angie Hill, <laughs> Cynthia Calvillo, yeah, right. Tabitha Rishi. Like these, these shouldn't have been close fights. Jessica Penne, like, yeah. And Loopy just fights in a style where, like, she makes these fights fucking weird. So, like, I think Loopy wins a decision. Why would I ever bet this? Like, and and honestly, I feel like if Verna gets a, a takedown in any round, she probably wins the round. I don't like Loopy's the get-up game. I think Verna could probably just control her for an entire round. So, like, I don't want to hold a minus 200 ticket in that case. So, I'm picking Loopy. Yeah. To just kind of keep this on the feet in a 15 minute boxing match. I mean, Jane Robo looked good on the feet against who is it, Kanaka? Yep. That's it. Like, she's never looked good on the feet other than that. Like, I think Loopy just probably outboxes her, but yeah. No, she doesn't. Uh, yeah, in her last two, one got her at like 130, minute. great, or 140, like right. great. I, at 200, 200. Like, that's wild. Yeah, Verna. I don't trust, I don't trust this jabroni. <laughs> Verna, uh, 1.8 strikes per minute on uh, her last one against uh, Rodriguez. Less than one strike a minute against Hill. I really wish I could back Verna here. I really do want her to win. Um, I just like rooting for her. I don't know why, but I just I like when she wins. Plus, she has an awesome hat. Um, uh, Lupi Godinez, when she wins, though, she oh, actually, I should say, she has 11 fights since uh, the beginning of 2021. I think she might be the most active fighter on the entire UFC roster, which is saying something. But every time she, I mean, ra rarely she'll put up a good score. She put up 128 against Elise Reed, second round sub, absolute domination. Um, but other than that, she's scoring 69, nice, against Tabitha Ricci, 88, 66 against Calvillo. Like, just not exciting numbers here. So I'm not really looking forward to this. I think on the DFS show, I faded two fights last night, and this was one of them. Um, I just think the winner scores 80 to 85 points, and we can just keep it moving, really. To be quite honest, seventy five hundred for Verna is just not quite cheap enough to where I would put her in a bunch of my lineups. And Luis, Jesus man, fix it for next week. Uh, Jamal Emmers taking on Nate the Train Landwehr minus one ten doesn't go minus one twenty does go 
Emmer's now a minus 172 favorite to Nate Landwehr's plus 147, 8,900, 7,300. It should be mentioned. The trains, guys with trains as their nickname, are uh, have not have yet to win a fight in the UFC in 2024. We've seen, I think they're 0 and 3, 0 and 4, something like that. Uh, Jared the Night Train Gooden was the last win, and that was the UFC Austin card. So it's not looking good for train based nicknames here. I don't know what to think about this one though. Jamal Emmers, half the time I think he can't score, then he comes out, he'll put up 130 against Bazookia. He actually put up 108 against Cachero, but only 71 against Askabov. Nate Landwehr does like to give up points. Doesn't beat the best guy. Actually, that's not true. He beat Ludovic Klein. David Onama was a good win. Um, I just don't know, man. 89 seems way too expensive for Emmers. What are the chances he puts up another 100-point score, especially against Landwehr, who's known for uh, being pretty tough and going to decision in a bunch of his fights? So I don't know. I suppose I'll pick Emmers, but for DraftKings, I'm not excited. I'll have much more Landwehr for DraftKings and GPPs than I will Emmers, I think. What do you think about this one? Uh, this is some notable line movement for sure. Oh, yeah. It needs to be mentioned. So, yeah, this is tricky because I didn't. I think this line is probably creeping toward what it should be. I think Emmers is more skilled, but, like, judges hate this guy. Like, yeah. he, doesn't fight, he doesn't fight a very pleasing style. He's kind of low volume. Like, he gets takedowns. He doesn't do shit. And Landwehr is like just entirely optics. Like his, I don't even think he's skill. He's literally just optics. So no, Emmers did beat Jenkins. He he beat him in my yeah, opinion too. Same and on paper, but he has no optics, like none. So and he would have only scored seventy nine. So yeah, no. And optics. I think Nate and I think Nate probably wins the third round just doing like Nate shit. So I don't love this fight in terms of like, I hate it for DraftKings. Because I don't even think Landwehr scores. He scores okay in a loss. And Emmer scores like blah in a win. Like, I don't think he 10Xs. I'm going to pick Nate Landwehr to just like steal a decision here with optics. But like, the terrible, it's a terrible fight to bet. Like, it's it's very tricky. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to have to agree. It's it's tough, man. I mean, and especially when you look at the stats, it's like, oh, Emmers has gone over a hundred and two out of the, his last three fights. Well, it's just like this, he he it's crushed Mizuk in a minute, which was like okay, right? Yeah, I mean, even like thirty seconds. So here we go, Chitty Bang Bang, one of the best nicknames there is in Jokwani taking on Reese Skeletor McKee. I guess that's a good nickname because Skeletor is funny, but I don't I don't know. Minus five hundred fight doesn't go. Plus 350 goes all three. Minus 141 for Chidi. Plus 121 for Reese, 86 and 7,600. Lou, start us off here. We know that Chidi is moving down in weight. Yeah, we got to see the scale here, man. Like, yeah. I mean, you know, could this fight not happen? It's very possible. I, I don't, I mean, nobody understands the weight move here. McKee is like, I don't know, man. Like he had a great round against Luce in round three. Like his cardio is good. This guy lost to fucking Cosma. Like, okay, I don't, you know, can wipe that one off. Right. Like, no problem. The, and I don't hold on. Why, dude? Why do you think like come, this like Glenn? I like Glenn. I like Glenn. This, this, you Double knockout. Reach, Double you knockout. Reach, like, okay, Glenn, Glenn, tell me how this fight ends a draw. You think 10 8 and 2 10 9s and McKay? Like, no, because if it's 10 8, like Cheaty killed him. What does like, this there's, even there's, mean? <laughs> he, Steve just says like, oh, Steve man. just says like the craziest shit and like, <laughs> I'm so here for it. Me too. Like how long has it been? I think it's like 10 years or like eight years. I heard, I don't long. know if this is true. He missed weight eight times at 170. I don't know if that's true. I'm, I just read it on Twitter earlier. So, like, Cheaty, man, like, I've gotten him wrong a lot because the first fight was Barry Alt. I think that was, like, our first show, and I'm like, oh, yeah, I like the over because Barry Alt's tough, and then, like, fight ended in, like, one second. Yeah. <laughs> and then, like, I, I, and then, like he, I think I had him bet against Dusko because Dorovich is, like, so bad, and he was, like, a huge favorite. He looked okay against G-Rod for a round in a fight that, honestly, a lot of refs would have called. 
So, like, people seem to think, can McKee, like, what's... I, I have a bet on McKee here, just a straight-up bet when the line was moving. I don't love it. But I kind of think he can just weather the storm here. I, I don't trust Chidi. Like, I don't know if he's going to have the same power at 170. And I don't think he's, like, that skilled to begin with. He's just very one-dimensional. And McKee, like, okay, can he take a shot? If he can, I think he wins at a very high clip. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah, this is uh, pretty much a must play for GPP, you know, in, in DraftKings. I mean, Chidi, obvious round one upside. Uh, McKee, been KO'd twice uh, in his career. I mean, the Hamzat was the one in the UFC. Uh, but if, like you said, if Reese can withstand the very short amount of cardio that Chidi has, I think it's, I think he definitely has a chance to uh, turn the tables here and get a finish of his own. So I'm going to be playing both sides and I might even outright pick reese mckee just because uh i like you said i don't trust gd i just don't trust him man and and i gotta see the scale just like you said first time he's gone to 170 in quite a while and it is not gonna be pretty he could weigh in at like 176 you have no idea um but he could also weigh in at 170 and just come in just fine we've seen that with who did we see chelsea chandler everybody was worried about a couple other fighters uh recently as well so we will have to see. Here we go, Lou. Bill Algio, Senor Perfecto, Mr. Perfect himself, taking on Canada's finest, Kyle Nelson, plus 155, uh, finishes inside the distance, minus 190, goes all three, minus 236 for Algio at this point, plus 200 for Nelson, 9,100, 7,100 are the salaries. Um, Look, I like Bill Algio. Lou already knows where I'm going with this. I love Bill Algio. I'm rooting for him in this fight. Uh, I'm rooting for Lou because Lou knows Bill and is friends with his coach. Uh, rooting for him for that. Absolutely. Plus, it's very hard to root for uh, for Kyle Nelson, even though what a handsome guy he is. I mean, a bald, bald, red hair, red bearded guy. Doesn't get, much better, than that. Doesn't get much better than that, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, I like Bill Algio. I just don't think he scores well. I think this goes all three. You know, outside of some kind of weird finish like he got against Burns, like he got against TJ Brown, both fighters who I think are significantly worse than Kyle Nelson. Um, I just don't think he scores very well. Probably 10 X's, but that's not going to do it for me at 91 points. So give me Algio. Maybe don't mind him for cash, but for GPPs, I'm not uh, not too excited. So um, in fact, for cash, even for Algio, I'd rather pay up 100 and get the guy we haven't talked about yet. So give me Bill Algio for the win. Lou. Tell us about your your boy. So I really need to break this fucking fight down. I don't I mean, hate. I do hate all Canadians except for Aubin Mercier. I think he's. <laughs> and, and I don't hate Gordo, but he's like I'm not gonna lie, he's he's skating on thin ice at me. That kid. <laughs> <laughs> well, he is a good skater. He he knows he's how to bad. do it. If anybody can skate on thin ice, it's Gordo. He's a son. He's a son of a bitch. Um. Yeah, I like Algeo around three sub, or just round three. It's plus twelve fifty. I gave that out on a prop show. Uh, I mean, I love Mister Perfect here. Like, yes. Louise from Louise. <laughs> like, look, I, I, I don't. I feel like I, like I, just one of those fights to just enjoy telling you how horrible Kyle Nelson is. He, he, like the Padilla win was fine. It's like the Trey Ogden fights where it's like. He just willed that to be boring as shit and like <laughs> hypnotized Padilla. Blake Builder stinks, and he needed a bullshit headbutt to get a draw against a guy who hadn't fought in four years. <laughs> like, I, I love that people are like, oh man, he's turning the corner. It's like, is he though? Is he? And meanwhile, like, what's Algier going to do? Like, he's, he's going to just be in his face the whole time. He's not going to give him this low volume fight. I think. I got to pull this up, but I think the most stats Nelson's ever landed in a fight was like two. The most in 82 against Padilla. And I, I taped that fight and I'm like, there's no fucking way he landed 82 shots. 59 against Nelson or against Builder. 20 yeah. against Duhu Choi with a lot of takedowns, which I'll get back to in a second. And then it's like 41 against Herbert in a fight he lost. Yeah. Uh, 56 against Billy Q. Billy Q just like spots the first round. Mm -hmm. Like, 
I mean, I don't know, man. Like, dude, Billy Key is gonna land or Billy Alge is gonna land like a hundred shots in here in the first two rounds. If Nelson goes for takedowns, Alge just pop right up. Like Alge has or Nelson Nelson has no finishing equity here because Alge is tough fucking. He's tough as shit, dude. Yeah. Like, dude's not finishable. Joe Anderson Brito didn't finish this guy. Like, nobody, right. he doesn't get finished. He's just a beast. So he's going to be in Nelson's face. He wins round two. I think he just finishes Nelson, I think, attritionally. Because Aljo is not like a, like a one-shot guy. He's an attritional finisher. I'd favor the round three sub over the round three KO. I'm just playing round three at plus 1250. Like, Dude, what are you just naming Canadians? Like, what's going on? <laughs> Perfect. And by play. the way, by the way, if he hits the problem with him, here's why I don't like 75 to one. Because if he does it by, by perfect plex, he's going to turn to the crowd and be like, now you're going to see a perfect plex. He's going to telegraph his moves. I never like that. No, no, you can't. Watch the show. <laughs> no, I will. We maybe we'll give you, you know, what we will do. We'll give you an early ver an early prediction of Shara Bullet versus Ehor Pateria. Oh, that's I couldn't remember his opponent all day. It's Ehor freaking Pateria. Uh, dude, Alja is going to crush this bum. And I see a lot of cappers that I no longer respect on the Nelson side. They're dead to me. <laughs> they suck. And while we're speaking of other cappers, since, since, since there's a new Twitter account, I wrote to this fucking MMA Al Dente guy. I have more followers than him on Twitter now. It took, <laughs> or the, or sorry, uh, the other account does. Not me. Definitely right. not me. Right. T took like no effort. <laughs> I wrote to this fucking dude and I'm like, hey man, big fan. It turns out he's an MMA capper from Long Island that's Italian. Ooh. I'm an MMA, I'm an MMA capper fr originally from Long Island that's Italian. Bruh. You guys, you guys have to fight. I just, why can't he answer me? What was this guy's fucking problem? He left you on red. Yeah. Like what's his problem, dude? I'm trying to make, I'm trying to create another superstar. Like I did for fucking stupid prop and stupid mushroom and <laughs> all these other fucking jobbers that I like, I took from obscurity and like made him a thing. <laughs> like all I'm trying to do is like make another fucking, Brooklyn brawler and he's just not ready to play ball dude the attritional I, finisher <laughs> that's like the Homer Simpson shit like Homer Homer Simpson is like the original attritional finisher that's true I think Algia fucks this fucker up and he sends him <laughs> back to where does Gordo live now St. Louis St. Louis whatever fake ass Canada bullshit we have in this goddamn <laughs> country where you know they don't pay taxes <laughs> We're going to have to send another wrestler, Erwin R. Scheifler, after him. That's true. <laughs> R.I.P. to IRS. No, he's alive. His Is son's he? not alive. Oh, yeah, no. Sad. Ray Wyatt's not alive. That's his son. What? I didn't know that. <laughs> Do you know who his other son is? Huh. The inspirational Bo Dallas. I've heard the name, but I can't place him in my oh, head. Dallas would do things like, it's not impossible. It's I'm possible. <laughs> but Bo Leave. Impossible. Bo, Bo Leave. There we go. Bo Leave in Bo your Dallas is awesome, dude. He's hysterical. <laughs> Bo Dallas. Thank God uh, Louise didn't do anything for this fucking one. Jesus. Nurse Sultan Rizaboyev, as the kids would say. Most punchable on. face in like, <laughs> ever. <laughs> Taking on uh, SD Dumas. Minus 600 doesn't go. Plus 400 does go. Minus 200 for Rizaboyev. Plus 173 for Dumas. 92 and 7K. Uh, why don't you start us off here? Who should we take? Who should we back with our money? The guy with one UFC, one minute of UFC time, or the guy that's like, uh, with his UFC time? So Tommy's not here, but I know he's going to watch the show back. <laughs> Shame on you, Tommy. So I'm not going to say what I should say, and he's going to hate me for it. <laughs> I don't have Mint Mobile now. <laughs> I would get Walmart Mobile over fucking Mint. I don't. I also don't drink Aviator Gin. I do watch Wrexham now. I support Wrexham. <laughs> uh, so I won't say what Tommy would say with Cedric Dumas's nickname, since we're, since we're already talking about 
Ryan Reynolds to talk about his business partner and just say the implication, Cedric, the, the implication, implication Dumas. <laughs> Is that a good? Can I think that's go good. That All right. I agree. Um, so do I go with Dumas, who stinks, and beat Cody Brundage in literally the well, worst fight than Severin Shamrock back at <laughs> UFC 5, where they didn't know the rules? To, at least they knew the rules to this fight. Or do I take the dude that's won in one minute? <clears throat> well, I remember on this show saying, I think Ruzabayev was a fraud. Man, I don't want to talk shit about Clint, but... Like, I really hope Clint loses this bet and, and he just <laughs> learns a lesson that, like, he could have bet like two units, seven, could have bet one unit, seven miles an hour. You get five units on this guy. Like, five, I, I don't, five. it's just, it, it's, I don't, I, if he went, by the way, if it wins, it's still a terrible bet. Like, I, I can't be clear enough about that. It's a horrible bet. Win or lose, it's a bad bet. It's way too much money on a fight with like two fucking unknown bums i like it's weird i can forgive dumas for the last fight like flying halfway across the world and being in the middle east where they're like oh you're different and he's like yeah (laughs) i am like where he's like i am not from here i mean i think that's probably the way to play this fight ruzabayev is is training with sean brady and all the philly boys now yep like he's only gonna get like dude he's only going to improve you can't be in that gym unless you can wrestle. So they are going, he's probably way better now than he was three months ago. And Dumas is training and like, you know, look, being in jail is a good base for MMA. Like this no is doubt. true. This no is doubt, true. No doubt. No doubt. No doubt. Like, yeah. I are you a Brooklyn nine, really nine watcher Lou? You know, I am. Oh, now we can bond over this now too. Yeah. No doubt. No doubt. No, no, okay. Okay. <laughs> Cool, 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 cool. They stole my fluffy boy. <laughs> All right, now we have so much more to talk about. Um, so I'm picking yeah. Ruzabayev, and, and and within the first two rounds, I don't think he's drawing dead the five minutes. Like I forget last night, it was like I think it was just my two senses. Like, <laughs> oh man, like. Because they love Dumas, and it's like, man, Ruza Boyev is such a front runner that Dumas can take over. And like, Dumas isn't a front runner. Like, that's literally like what he fucking does. Yeah. And like, oh, he's gonna have better cardio. Well, he's not training. And if he's been grapple fucked for five minutes, I'm not certain how he's in better shape in round two. So the pick is not Dumas. <laughs> Will the somebody please somebody <laughs> for Tommy? <laughs> He's gonna be so mad at inside. Yeah. My kid goes, so that's a funny name, Dumas. You know that, right? <laughs> yeah, it's not gonna, gonna be funny. Anymore. He's gonna be like, You should have said it on air. I can't believe it. <laughs> you should have got canceled. I'd like to ask chat before I before we get it to you how you feel about his bet because Clint's because and I'm not this is not like a talk shit on Clint. This has been like a big topic on like the, the Twitter box. And like I saw Levis like was like I, I get the dog shot like I don't get the the bet like how much or like I'm very curious with chat and again respectfully like respectfully not like he's the fucking worst I don't mean it like that like I mean respectfully like what do you think of that unit sizing for a bet like this like are you is it are you okay with it because he jumped on a number he thought was wide because look he beat the number he did his job. Mm-hmm. Or are you like, what the fuck? Like, I'm just, I'm very curious what chat in general thinks of that. I know what I think. I just voiced it. I know what you think because, you know, I get you. Right. (laughs) And I'm also, I agree with everything you said. I'm on the Ruza Boyev uh, early finish. I love the wrestling upside here. Dumas has been taken down twice in uh, every single fight in the UFC was out controlled by Josh Fremd for half the four eight minutes that he was uh he was in you know out controlled Cody Brundage but that he didn't do shit when he was on top and uh, Abu Izatar that was even even worse performance sixty three points in that win man so even if Dumas does somehow win is he getting to finish I highly doubt it and what's he gonna look like in a decision win I'm just not on board even at seven k I guess if you're gonna punt 
I mean, maybe, but that's as much as I would play him. I really like Ruzaboyev this week. I think even though he only has, you know, a minute of UFC cage time, it does kind of bring back memories of like Sean Strickland versus what's that dude's name who looked just absolutely terrible. I can't remember his name. Ab- Abbas Magomedov, is that right? Uh, so it does bring back thoughts like that when you when you see guys with one minute of UFC cage time against guys that aren't good but still have, you know, forty upwards of 40 minutes of UFC cage time. So I guess there is a chance for Dumas, but honestly, I just think Ruzaboyev can get it done, hopefully early, hopefully in the first round, and pay off that $9,200 salary. He was the one I said just pay up $100 more off of Algeo if you're looking for somebody for cash. This is who I was talking about. So give me a... Uh, Nur Sultan Rizaboyev for the win. And hopefully Tommy's not too mad. Next fight, here we go. Bruno Blindado Silva. This is a good one. His, his nickname means armored, apparently. Taking on Chris Weidman. I believe that's John Cougar Mellencamp behind him, Lou. Hopefully this is the last time we have to hear John Cougar freaking Mellencamp. Um I'm not a fan of this fight, dude. Minus 275 doesn't go. I guess that's good for me. Plus 215 uh, goes all three. Minus 230 for Bruno Silva. Plus 195 for Weidman. 9,300, 6,900. I guess Silva has huge round one upside, big finishing upside. Other than that, he hasn't done shit lately, man. Both guys are one and four in their last five. Weidman, I mean, everybody's saying, oh, he went all five with Tavares, three with Tavares. Tavares doesn't know how to finish anything. He doesn't ever finish a fight. He had Weidman on one leg for like the better of seven minutes and just did not keep kicking it, didn't finish the fight, landed 37 strikes uh, or 70 strikes against Weidman and still didn't do uh, much in the way to get a finish. I think Silva is going to be looking for the finish, even though he's terrible. And I think he has a chance to uh, connect with Weidman's chin, who has suffered six uh, professional losses by KOTKO. So, honestly, I'd root for Chris Weidman to win. I just don't think it's going to happen, Lou. I I just don't think it's going to happen. Bruno Silva, I mean, I'll play him some in GPPs, but I'm also not confident in him. So that means I have to play some of Chris Weidman as well, even if I don't want to. Are there any good bets for this one? Oh, yeah. That is John Cougar Mellencamp. I oh, yeah, I have I have the ultimate bet for this one, and you have to search on your books for this. I have Weidman by Jewish guilt. <laughs> I think it's plus 300 on a lot of – Pepe said it was plus 300. And here's how it happens. Silva winds up, and Weidman goes, would your mother approve this? Have you even called her this week? Have you? As he's, and as he's contemplating that comment, boom, take down. <laughs> well, I'm gonna take that. Just right there. Uh, I don't want to give a side for this fight. Okay, I am gonna give a bet that it will probably be out tomorrow on DraftKings, and then I'm gonna give a like a weird bet on top of that. Oh, nice. Whatever. This is same game parlay. Whatever Weidman one plus round one takedown is, it's gonna be plus odds. I love it because he either dies. Or he's going for a fucking takedown here, and if he and if he goes for a takedown, I think he gets it. And then you bet Bruno Silva in distance, exactly, and you get a really nice uncorrelated parlay. <laughs> let, me, let me see if DraftKings has it up right now, because DraftKings still prices these things like, like they don't know how to price these. Let me see if they have now. Nah, they don't have all the, the stuff up yet with DraftKings, but. Weidman one plus round one takedown and Silva in the distance is gonna you you're probably gonna get like plus eight hundred for a very reasonable scenario, like. And why look what man? And by the way, this whole Weidman's at home. Now I'm from Long Island. Long Island is not Atlantic City. Like That's these are true. different things. <laughs> like these are like these are very different regions. Like very different. Everybody hates fucking New Jersey unless you grew up in New Jersey. Why well, didn't grow up in New Jersey? Grew up in New York, dude. These are very different fucking things. <laughs> just let me get that out of the way, dude. These are very fucking different things. Do I think Silva just bonks them at a high rate? Of course. But like, get creative. Like, Weidman could very easily get a take. Dude, Silva's takedown defense stinks. He's the worst black belt to ever have black belted. I shouldn't say that. Like, he'd murder me. I don't mean it like, you know. I'm a black belt in thugonomics. We all know this. 
I'm the doctor of Thugonomics. <laughs> Thugonomics. <laughs> Get your yeah, jeans on right like, now. New Jersey is like the fucking worst. Like it's awful. Like it's terror. It's the armpit. Like people are from New Jersey. Like I'm an Eagles fan. It's like right. You know your state is terrible. Like you're just rooting for <laughs> Philadelphia fans. Like you know. So I'm gonna pick. I'm gonna pick Silva to win. But I, I think the Weidman one plus round one takedown is like a super fucking interesting look. Like he could turn back the clock for a minute. By the way, if he gets a takedown in the first round, he wins the round. Yeah. And then Silva gets up and's like, okay, okay. Like, fuck you. And last thing I'm going to add to this is like people that are like, oh, well, GM3 like dominated. I'm like, dude, Silva. And I had to bet on GM3, but Silva went into that fucking, yeah. And Snapple. Snapple, the Snapple lady is also a famous. Well, I'm from I'm from the same town as the Snapple lady. Valley Stream, nice. New York. Uh Silva was like sick against GM3, dude. So like, and then everybody else he fought, like Brendan Allen, like, dude, Brendan Allen's good, man. Like, I hate him. Yeah. Like Allen's like pretty well rounded and good. Like, forget about like don't the GM3 fights, like, look at this guy. Some <laughs> random guy. Hold on, hold on. No, you eat shit. There you go. <laughs> Told him. Yeah, you did. Go ahead. That's that's it. <laughs> co-main event this is a banger and i don't understand <clears throat> excuse me everyone's uh opinion on this fight i really don't get it vicente luque taking on joaquin buckley minus 190 doesn't go plus 155 does go very closely lined minus 118 minus 102 and very closely lined on DraftKings as well lou i've heard so many people on joaquin buckley this week do you agree with them no, not at everyone all. I've heard is on Buckley except for me and you. I just think he's he's such a like. I don't feel like anybody that's betting Buckley is betting on Buckley. I feel like they're betting against Luke A. Mm -hmm. because he had brain bleed from two fights ago. Sure and didn't like, affect him in the RDA fight. Well, he didn't get hit. He so sixty six times. My guy, my guy, blood money bets. Cody has the over one and a half here. And like, I'll take that one step further. I think this fight could weirdly go the distance because I think that it's going to be a lot of cage control from Luke. I think he's going to just do whatever he can to not get decked. It's yeah. And it is, it's a major step down. Like Buckley is not like some, Oh, he's working on his grappling. Like, dude, you know who dominated him in the grappling for a round? Al Hassan. In the third round. Yeah, ridiculous. A dude with no cardio beat him in grappling in the third round. Like, I don't and Buckley doesn't have what's the, the fucking dude, the, the military guy from Detroit. Uh, oh, I forget his name. It was Dale something? I can't remember. That, like the fucking YouTuber is like, yeah. Yeet, yeet. Or whatever he fucking has. <laughs> I, I like I swear people still cap Buckley on like the fucking impa knockout, dude. It's crazy. Like he's he's just such a one-dimensional bum. You know he doesn't have any round one finishes in the UFC. Isn't that he, surprising? He's the, he's the illusion of some massive finisher. Right. And people just cap, yeah. I there's huge and by the way. Don't even bother betting Luke yet. Like, I kind of think people are still going to bet Buckley. I'm like, I mean, you get a better number. Like, dude, if this, like, just skill for skill, if not for this whole, like, oh man, he had brain bleed. Mm -hmm. Like, I think we talked about this. Oh no, I don't know if this is on the DFS show, but like, how would you cap Buckley against Jeff Neal? Like, Jeff Neal's a massive favorite against Buckley, right? Oh, massive yeah. Massive favorite. I think so. And Jeff Neal's not like I don't I don't want to say Jeff Neal's one dimensional because he's not completely one dimensional, I, but he's but he's pretty one dimensional. Mm -hmm. He's just way better at that one dimension than Buckley, and he just came out and he fucking and he fucked Luke a up, dude. Like, and it took him three rounds of crushing his head. Buckley is right. just not that type of fighter, man. Like, I don't think Buckley has like a hundred strikes in him to like just fucking keep hitting him. I think Luke a can make it weird and ugly and fun narrative. Luke a is from New Jersey. 
Is he? Or he lived there for like nice. years. So, you know, yeah, the pick has been sent by Luke. I, oh, that's right. He, and he knocked out Arroyo. It took him three. <laughs> he scored like 78 points in that fighter. <laughs> yeah. <in 82. laughs> yeah. And, and I didn't want to say what Steve told me privately, but uh, I, I'm putting this up because I, I feel like this is just our brand of show. <laughs> I think some people will read this and be like, I don't know the reference. And then some people will be like, oh, fucking hey, dude, that's a horrible reference. <laughs> there, there'll be, there's no middle ground on this comment. No. It's either, no. oh, shit, or like who? Or Jesus. By the way, Vern, for those watching this, Vern Schillinger, just look up Vern Schillinger. And when you read like the first paragraph on Wikipedia, you're going to be like, I'm not reading. <laughs> I don't need to read any more of this. <laughs> The great, uh, go. by the way, very underrated, awesome actor. Vern Schillinger. Uh, what's fucking Jay? Uh, I can't remember his name. J.K. Rowling's or. Uh, oh, J.K. J.K. Rowling, J.K. Simmons. He's uh, and he's fucking. He's uh, Omni Man. Have you watched that? Did they? I know the reference. I know that he destroys everyone violently. He's Omni. Listen, I'll go a different way. He was fantastic in Whiplash. Have you seen that movie? Oh yeah. And, oh and, yeah. And the, what's the spy one? The Bureau, like between the dimensions. Um. Oh, I think I saw that. Well, I don't remember. J.K. I'll tell you what it is right now. Yeah. I'm if you've seen beard. Oz, then then you definitely sick, know. like sick beard. Yep. Like he makes me want farmers insurance. That's true. I think he's he's awesome. Like him and uh, Clans is it Clancy Brown? I think those two are my favorite. Like Clancy old guy Brown. Actors. Clancy Brown was great in the Flash when then he got like mind controlled by Grodd. <laughs> Grodd. Um, what the fuck is the name of this goddamn show? Um, he I'm was in Spider Man. That's right. I'm looking up. Uh, well, while you're looking, I'll just quickly say counter, counterpart. He's he. He's, oh yeah. He's, he's him, and then he's like him and the other. It, that's why it's like a really good show. But it, but don't watch it because it like just ended. Yeah, that's. Like, they didn't the get renewed. So there's like no. There's like no definitive anything. So like, don't bother. That's the worst. Um. Yeah, Freedom I like Rube. fucking Moreno. Dude, look at this. What a reference. Oh yeah. Man. Wow. Love it. Adabizi, wasn't that the yeah? I, I was just referencing him the other day too. Oz lives forever. Um, yeah, quickly, I like Luke. I like Luke decision. I'm probably avoiding this one. Uh, <laughs> I'm probably avoiding this one on DraftKings. Um, for the most part, I just think a lot of people score better. Pay up a hundred, take a chance on the businessman, Evo Aslan. Oh, yeah, there you go. All right, let's I just got, uh, their, keep I just got their timeless on Hulu. Nice, not bad. Like, actually, like, decent. Well, I, I think well play. acted. Fargo's done. I'm all caught up on Shogun. I got a Fargo. Fargo is so good. Thank. Another, I'm yeah, glad was, you watched it. Also, incredible. I'm glad you sassed me many times saying, I can't believe you didn't recommend this show to me. <laughs> Bitch. Bitch. That's all I did was recommend that show. <laughs> all I did. I'm like, why aren't you watching it? Why are we doing a show? I'm like, go watch it. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, three body problems. All right. Okay. I heard it was really good. Just insane. It's just okay. I, 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 Cold I, I, bloody. Thank you. Oh, Lou gets the reference. This is the best day ever. Lou, also, I should, I have to tell you in our chat, Dave Attell has a new special on Netflix. You have to watch it. Have to yeah. watch it. Yes. Dave Attell is the goat. You, you know, have, like this. a favorite Dave Attell joke? Because I do. Uh, I I don't not off the top of my head, not fun, on the spot. Fun fact, I'm, fun fact, I'm in the background on his insomniac. Uh, yeah, you told me that. <laughs> David tell has a joke. He's like, listen. He's like, if you ever get caught masturbating by your grandmother, here are some tips. Number one, act surprised. Don't worry, you will be. <laughs> He's like, number two, act like the fish tank is fighting with you. It'll throw her way off. <laughs> He also says wild. that if he had a kid, he would name his kid Pizza Pussy Santa because everyone <laughs> likes one of those things. <laughs> it's like awesome. It's like such a great joke, dude. Every every line, my kids were probably annoyed with me. I was I was dying every single line. This is when did it come out? Amazing uh, today. 
Is this they, the one he's talking know. about? No, but that one's also good. That's him and uh, Jeff uh, Ross just roasting people. Um, no, the one that came out today is called Hot Cross Buns. All right, well, <laughs> and it's on it's on Netflix. <laughs> oh, it's like I, I typed in Dave at and it's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah right. so it, and it's only 40 minutes. So you got to watch it. Here oh, we he go. Looks he looks old as shit. Yeah, he's uh, what this fuck is. I don't know if Justin's if Justin's probably still in. Ch- oh, what's up, Moyes? What's going on, my bro? Justin always on these streams with Aaron's like, I like he thinks I'm David Tell. <laughs> like he, I think he literally thinks I'm the same person as David. That would Tell. be awesome. I'm not. I wish I was as funny, dude. He's funny as shit. <laughs> All right, All right, let's uh let's bring this card home. I'm t- I'm a tired boy. Uh UFC at Atlantic City main event, Aaron Blanche Eald, according to the UFC, taking on Man and Fioro. Minus 125 doesn't uh does not go all five, minus 105 does. Blanchfield, the semi-big favorite, minus 176 to Fioro's 151, 800, I will start us off and keep it quick. I think you have to play this fight um especially in cash i think this line is too wide um everybody who doesn't kind of dig in either tape or stats probably thinks this is a grappler versus a striker but i kind of disagree blanchfield throws way more strikes and is way more successful with her striking than those people would believe and fioro is a little bit better in the grappling department than uh, those people would believe as well i'm going with blanchfield but i think it's closer than the line indicates i think it's going all five, and I don't honestly mind a cash stack uh, for this main event at 88 and 74. It's going to open your lineup up uh, to exactly, you know, to fit in a lot more people that you're looking to get this week. So I don't mind that, but I am picking Aaron Blanchfield uh, to get the win here in a decision. I'm really, I, I just want to see how far she can go, man. I'm excited uh, when, you know, young, young talent is up and coming and looking very, very good. Guys like Almeida. Not as young as Blanchfield, obviously, but you know, guys kind of like that. I love seeing it. So give me Blanchfield. And Fioro just didn't look great. I thought she would look better against Rose coming up uh to flyweight for the first time, but that was basically uh in a in a break even fight on paper. So I'm gonna lead Blanchfield here. Lou, how do you see us? Take us home with this main event. <laughs> you I you don't know who Eric Rowan is. I think dude. I do actually. I think I do. <laughs> I mean, I mean, that's that's a tremendous fucking hilarious comparison. He's the, he's the gigantic bald guy with the red beard. Hold on, I'm gonna, Gu- I'm gonna Guru Google Scouting it. has seven minutes on Blanche. Thoughts? Yeah, I have some thoughts here. So I'm friends with TB. Yeah, this like, guy. Yeah, and I bust Guru's balls. And this <laughs> motherfucker has not followed the new account, and I think he's acting all fucking hoity-toity. So I told TB and him. I would hate it if something absolutely horrible happened to him in, in Atlantic City, especially when I'm somebody who's known to be good with a tire iron, let's say. <laughs> you pull a Nucky Thompson on him? Um, I would hate it, but I would get over it really fast. Because <laughs> I know that if T... Because with TB, I told him, does he need legs to do the pot every week? Because <laughs> if he doesn't, eh, and is he driving? Eh, he'll figure it out. Um, I want to put up Becca's comment here because I think this is like super important. Here's the thing with Blanchfield. She doesn't just get takedowns and do nothing. When she gets takedowns, she is so active. Like she is just want, like, I'm not saying every fight's like the one against Molly Meatball, but there was no, like, I'm searching for, I'm doing position over submission. This was just <laughs> launching hatred. <laughs> and and when she gets takedowns that's what she does like she yeah. is just going for violence it's not like three minutes of control time now to becca's point i think the first round might be dicey i i see i gave away blanchfield three four five sub on FanDuel. it's plus 550 on the prop show with finesse the books yeah i, I think blanchfield could win the fight earlier than that like i just Ooh. don't rate fioro that highly i think everybody she's fought disappointing i think every fioro's fought was like kind of perfect for her style like right 
like Rose moving down and Chukagian, who like, hey, and you know that's my home girl, like the Pride of Quaker Town. Pride of Quaker Town, yep. Terminarian. But like that was a fight. They're like, okay, this is a perfect fight. Fiora can win. And she didn't like dominate. She's right. never faced anybody like Blanchfield is basically female Marab. Like she may get Ooh. stuffed on her first 11 takedowns. She's going to get it on the 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th, and 16th time. Like she's just going to keep spamming them and she'll get one. And she will like literally, and like, and, and, you know, there's a big debate here that she's not attractive. Is it's there? weird because the people on Twitter, like Guru, who I'm just now I'm just gonna say it, Guru and others that have said, "Oh, she's not attractive," but these are the people that I don't think like you know have sex. <laughs> so it's weird to me. It's a weird thing to say, "Oh, this girl's not hot," and it's like she's very. First of all, she's very attractive. She's great at her job, which makes her even more attractive. And if she said, hey, do you want to have sex? You'd be like, no, I'm sorry, you're ugly. I'm like, no, you wouldn't, dude. Well, it's I don't, really weird and disrespectful. Like, I, don't, I also don't think she's going to say that to any of those people. I don't think they're her type. You catch my she, dress. She has a picture with two of them, and she's eyeing up TV. She's like, hey there, brother. Uh, uh, I'm not trying to burst TV's bubble, but. Now, if, now if she's you not like. Brandon Olivas, she is not interested. Olivas is so funny, though, dude. He's so funny. <laughs> now, now, Blanchfield's not my type because she doesn't appear to be uh, batshit insane. Right. She's, she's not mug shoddy's material. Like, Agapova? Like, let's fucking go. Agapova, like, yeah. The, the crackhead. If that's the, last, if that's the last face I ever see before getting stabbed because she thinks I was cheating on her, I'm like, that's my mom. <laughs> I literally texted my mom. <laughs> And she just stabs me, and and he's gone. Okay, so that was weird. I broke Monk, guys. So that's it. That's the end of the show. And uh, Monk I, is I, I hit a button. I hit a button. The stupid mouse has a back well, button. Like so has I a like back button. On. I like Blanchfield platonically, but like I, I mean, but yes, unlike these fools, if she was like, "Hey, you want to go out one day?" I'd be like, you know, like I would not Dorothy Mantooth her. <laughs> I would yeah. take her on my seafood dinner and then and would her. call her back. Dude, dude, how many people did it take you to make this show? Because I'm seeing people in the background. How many people? What? I said there's like a hand in the background, dude. That's not yours. Oh. <laughs> how many people are on this show? It's my kid. How many countries are in this country for? <laughs> I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> How many countries are in England for? Uh, yeah. Okay, for. There we go. That's and Blanchfield will win the title after this fight. And you by the way, so? that's whole Macy Barber thing. Yeah, stop it. Like, even, but even Fiora is like, dude, we had a fight ready. And Barber's like, nope. Like, <laughs> dude, like, no, she's. Dude, I don't like Macy Barber, man. If you're and dude, both of them would fuck her up. I think Brady made a good point that I don't agree with, but I think is interesting. I don't. I have like a weird mohawk going right now. Like I have nine <laughs> hairs and they're mohawks. <laughs> um, Fiora, like if she loses this, that's probably the end of the hunt. Yeah, Blanchfield, if she loses this, can like I'm rebound up. Like, dude, so Fiora's like, ten years older than she is. Like, so I get that. Like, it's now and ever for Furo. I just, honestly, man, I think we're just witnessing greatness with Blanchfield, man. I, I really do. Like, I'm hoping. I think, she should, I, I think she's going to stamp a victory here and be like, what's up, bitches? I really do. Yeah. Another one. Another younger fighter that I really want to see do well. I know I talked about that earlier on the show. She definitely fits that category. I just, I just love the way she fights, man. I think it's all, I, li I like watching her fight. So that's what I'm going to be looking forward to. And I, um, hey, man, right there with you, right there with. You. Look, I say it all the time. I I have sex all the time. One day somebody else will be in the room with me when I do it. <laughs> the shadow you know? puppet is up next. They said one day somebody will be in the room. Hey, man, I'm 46. Fuck that. I'm, you know, <laughs> yeah, I'm exactly. Amazed. I'm amazed it works. <laughs> That's what the, your shirt actually means. It's directed <laughs> towards <laughs> towards <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> on that note uh, let's, right. you know cappers do this shit 
No, no. Nobody does it. You can't get this on Brady's show. Yeah. That fucking Brady. (laughs) Brady, and by the way, Brady a million percent knows I'm fucking, we're buffs in his balls. Oh, yeah. We love Brady. Also, Brady Brady loves doing shows with me because he's like, like, guys, no, he, um, there's still over 30 of you in here. Please go to Brady's Twitter at DFS by the numbers or find him on YouTube. I'm sure you already follow him and watch his Na Leong breakdown video. I think it's a couple of minutes. It needs to be watched. So if you haven't watched it already, go watch this it. Week, hold, this week on his video, he said something along the lines of, he's talking about the Petrowski fight, and he's like, he beat Izong, who goes, I mean, I love him. <laughs> my guy. But last night he was freaking out because he's like, fuck, we have Lou on. And I'm like, you invited me. You asked me to do the show. And you know he's like, what's he gonna do? What's he gonna do? What's he gonna do? And I'm like, right. And, I didn't do- and what I do? Nothing. You were a, the, a perfect a professional. Saint. No, thank God I was there because if I wasn't, it would have been everybody picking against everybody picking the pleasure man except you. Thank God I was there. Yeah, to balance to the restore odds. Restore equilibrium and and decorum. Yeah. What we are nothing if not you know. And I'm on next them. week because Weezy's still gone because it's Chris Curtis fight week. Spoiler alert, guys! Fuck the Chris Curtis. <laughs> Break his back, make him humble, Lou. There it is. There we go. <laughs> no Kiero, Chris Curtis. No Kiero. <laughs> there it is, guys. I mean, if you if you needed a better way to end, there isn't one. How the hell is this hoe putting snow preparation papers on my sombrero? <laughs> you know I can love this sombrero, right? <laughs> Prince of Mischief, get him out of here. Get him out of here. Ban. Oh reported. Ban. Blocked. For life. Channel For over. life. Yeah. This is ridiculous. If if Pleasure Man wins, I'm, I'm you might not see me next week. We appreciate all you guys, man. We really do. <laughs> Sleazy Parlay, Algeo, and whoever you like. Just Algeo. Just parlay yeah, Algeo, go. dude. He's gonna, there he's go. gonna, it's gonna be a jihad. Can I say that? <laughs> jihad on Kyle Nelson. We are the good ISIS. <laughs> he's kind of like a maggot. He's a maggot, dude. So like, I, I feel like if he saw this, he'd be like, "Yeah, dude. Oh, it's yeah, gonna be right." Yeah. I feel like he'd totally end up me saying that. All right, let's get out of here before my kids kill each other. Uh, That's I don't have anything else going she on. Me. She heard. Oh me. no, that's not good for you. But, no, it's very good. Oh, okay. <laughs> my sombrero. <laughs> Lou, can the people find you anywhere else? Yeah, this thing down here. Go follow it. Also, don't report it. Yeah. Don't like, do that. Don't be an asshole. Because because I'm telling you right now, if I got banned once for violence, imagine what I will do the second time. <laughs> I'm gonna be yeah, like, exactly. it'll be like fucking uh, Jay and Silent Bob. I'll be like with the fucking clipboard coming to your house like are you like are you small penis 6969 <laughs> okay what yeah exactly <laughs> i need to rewatch that maybe my, my it probably doesn't hold up. It would appreciate if you followed that account yes please the do account that i give edicts to from across the room and they're wearing like a just to give you a visual they're wearing like a barrister wig that's awesome yes yeah, so oh yes sir <laughs> let's get out of here as usual we want all of you to enjoy the fight so enjoy and we will see you in the next one